That's right! Welcome to Wasteman Corner Crash Course, and today we're going to be talking about the different black identity groups from the park. Now, you might ask, who are these black identity groups? There's three main black identity groups in the park. The first of them, uh, I would say, I would say it's the worst of them all, honestly. You know, actually, let's start with the least bad of them. Let's start with Gang. Gang stands for Guiding a New Generation. Gang was a relatively united uh, group, and, you know, I, I, I'm sure that I will have people telling me, oh, Gang is not a black identity group, Gang is just Guiding a New Generation. It doesn't specify blacks. Well, why is it that most of the people of Gang are blacks, then? There's a reason for everything, guys. There's a reason for everything. You know, uh, Gang was focusing a lot on defending black people. And it was, during a time, it was kind of an alliance between blacks and Muslims. Which wasn't a very strong alliance, because it collapsed relatively quickly and um, astoundingly. As you might know by the many different feuds between blacks and Muslims that there were in the park. Uh, now, gang was very dependent, even nowadays it doesn't have a lot of influence, but it, because it was very dependent on an outside enemy, on somebody you can focus on, somebody you can unite against, siege mentality, it's a very powerful thing to unite people. Um, that siege mentality was uh, strong with a specific person, a specific uh, Malaysian person, whom you might know, but I'm not going to name any names, you know me, no names. Um who kind of whipped first the Muslims into a frenzy, and then also the blacks into a frenzy. And they kind of united, and they kicked the guy out, and everybody was fine and happy, right? Not really. Not really, yeah. Uh, there were many feuds after that, so they basically collapsed after that one moment. Ironically, having that enemy, having that op opponent, made them stronger. Because they could say, they could point a finger and say, look at that guy, he's so blatantly... Um, bad to us, he talks trash about us all the time, we need to eradicate him. After the erasure of that specific person, they lost their purpose. Simple as that. Because they don't have an ideology. They don't have a specific ideology that they will follow. Some of them will say they're anarchists. They can't even describe what anarchy is. Some of them will say they'll so they're socialists. And when you start asking questions, it all collapses down. Um... There's no real identity in gang. The, not really. I don't think so. There are a few intellectuals in the in the group that supposedly push them forward, supposedly explain what they're about, but it's very vague in the best of times, and it doesn't make a lot of sense, to be honest. But gang is not very strong nowadays. There's not a lot of following. There's not a lot of influence, so I don't think there's it's worth talking for a very long time. Now, the second group, None of these groups have that much influence, by the way. They don't have, they're not big movements. Except the third one. I might speak about the third one a bit. Uh, the second one is um, uh, Pan-Africans, with whom I uh, had many, many different discussions in Speaker's Corner. And the first discussion started because of the very name, Pan-African. Now, my argument was, not all Africans are blacks. So, and they were arguing with, um, I think, a guy from Algeria, who was, um, you know, who was mixed race, he was kind of Middle Eastern looking, but also um, uh, with a touch of European, maybe a touch of, uh, of, um, of a black person in him, but I'm not sure, he, he, was, he looked like a North African, basically, he looked like a um, mixed race person, between Middle Eastern and, uh, you know, Arabic and uh, African and European. Uh, and they told him he wasn't, uh, he couldn't be a Pan-African, because he wasn't black. Because only blacks can be Pan-Africans. Now, I didn't really care much about the discussion itself. I was just kind of laughing in the sidelines. Because, um, yeah, because it doesn't make a lot of sense to uh, cling that much to race, in my opinion. Uh, even though uh, it's good to have different races, I think it's um, uh, it could be good in the long run for humans to uh, have different races for different reasons. One of the reasons for that is we can observe it on the um, uh, on the Olympic Games. Different races can achieve different, uh, uh, you know, supremacy in different sports, which means they're good at specific things, which is a good indicator that uh, I don't think it's good to just uh, say, oh, we're all exactly the same. We're not really exactly the same. If we are able to use the specific things uh, each race might be best at, then we can uh, put those qualities to good use. But anyway... 
Uh, again, I'm not going to delve into race that much. Uh, and I said that uh, why are they calling them Pan-Africans? They should call themselves uh, Pan-Blacks or Pan-Negroids as the, um, uh, as the race name. You know, uh, Caucasoid, Negroid, Mongoloid, which are approximations, of course. They're not perfect definitions of race. There are many, many different ethnicities around the world. For example, the Native Americans or whatever, whatever whoever you want to give example as, uh, who might not qualify in these races. But it's just a broad generalization, so there's flaws in it. But then again, you know, they wanted to Pan-Africans to be black, so it's clear. They want Pan-Africans to only be Negroids. Uh, of course, they didn't like it, because this Negroid doesn't sound nice. It doesn't sound, Pan-Negroid doesn't sound as, well, as good as Pan-African at all. And they got uh, pissed about it. And I had many discussions with them after that. Some of them involved talking about the um, uh, Egyptians being blacks which you can kind of, with the most basic of research, see that is not quite true. You see, Egyptians did have a lot of um, uh, interaction with blacks, with the Nubians. Also with the Numidians, but Numidians are more mixed race than blacks. There are more, you know, Carthaginians, Numidians, they were not exactly blacks. Some of them were, but not all of them. Uh, Egyptians, however, they uh, it all depends from who was ruling them. For a while they were ruled by original Egyptians, which were, you know, relatively mixed race, we could say, we could call them them for them that, for example. Uh, they were ruled by Persians, they were ruled by uh, Greeks, they were even ruled by um, um, uh, Nubians for a little while, uh, which is the period known as the period of the Black Pharaohs. So yeah, they're right, there were Black Pharaohs, but just a hundred years, and you know, you might say a hundred years is a lot. Well, comparing it to the whole history of Egypt, which spanned thousands of years, it's not that much. It's just a little, a little bit, honestly. Uh, but yeah, partially they're right, and that's what I said. But they were just claiming complete ownership of the Egyptian civilization. So I couldn't just say, yeah, you're right, to appease them. It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, there seems to be this fake, uh, you know, this self, uh, this attempt of putting yourself on a fake pedestal of saying, yeah, the black race achieved everything. We we were kings. We were skangs. And, you know, I spoke about this meme a while ago. Not only blacks have uh, practiced this fallacy of saying, we were skangs and all that stuff. Some uh, uh, right-wingers also say that all civilization was invented by whites and whites are the pinnacle of civilization and all that stuff. If you have a basic grasp of history, that's not exactly what happened. In fact, that's not at all what happened. Many of the... Uh, first achievements of humanity were done, most of them in fact, were done in the Middle East, after that in China, in uh, Egypt, in um, you know Mesopotamia, and uh, of course also in Greece. Those were the first civilizations. The first one, at least that's a historical accepted fact, was the Sumerian civilization uh, in Mesopotamia. There were uh, the first text, the first written text, and thus the beginning of history is in the Middle East. So, yeah not uh, not quite very white or black honestly it was passed by many civilization by many races civilization was yeah so i don't think it's safe to say one race has made and is upholding all of civilization throughout history uh it's a bit of a fallacy the whole we will skangs argument uh, and it gets worse uh, wait until we get for the third group in fact we might as well just start talking about the third group which is the nation of islam Despite the name, they have absolutely nothing to do with Islam. Um, you know, through all, despite all its flaws, Islam usually appeals to all races. And yes, I know that in, um, if I'm not mistaken, in Salil al Bukhari, it says something about Muhammad selling um, uh, a white slave for two black slaves or something like that. And it speaks a lot about Muhammad being white, about the paleness of his uh, thighs and of his uh, legs and whatever. Uh, but anyway, the practicality of Islam, in practice, Islam is practiced by many different races, so I don't think there's a, that much of a huge, um, you know, centrism on race. Also, there's lots of black Christians. But in, uh, uh, in America, in the US, where um, the nation of Islam had its origin, as far as I know, um, there was this uh, fake idea that uh, Christianity is a religion of whites and Islam is the religion of blacks. Because uh, the Americans were pretty racist uh, in the beginning against blacks, they had you know you know they had a civil war, they had the civil rights movement with Martin Luther King. Before that, it was a bit uh, uh, dark, no pun intended, for uh, for blacks. 
Uh, but yeah, they did manage to fix it eventually. But the Nation of Islam didn't really care much. They just continued with their stuff. They brainwashed actually some famous people like uh, Muhammad Ali into um, uh, into going into even changing his name, even though Cassius Clay was a guy or the original Cassius Clay was a guy who opposed slavery. So yeah, that's uh, that's not very clever for Muhammad Ali to say that he was a slave owner. But anyway, Muhammad Ali was a great boxer and a pretty funny guy. So I still I have a love hate relationship with him. Uh, let's let's not uh, get out of the topic. The Nation of Islam, they have uh, an ideology that uh, is not really Islam. It's all about race, all about being black, all about black identity. Now they don't um, follow black identity. As I usually say, there isn't one black identity. There's many different ethnicities, many different cultures in Africa. If you want to make one black identity, you want to lump together all of those different cultures into one misshapen group. It will never work. It simply doesn't, you know, black culture doesn't exist. Just like purely white culture doesn't exist, or any race culture doesn't exist. There are many different cultures in any race. So it's a silly attempt to begin with. Uh, kind of like the attempt of, um, um, you know, uh, how what's their name? The racial... Anyway, the... Uh, I'm I'm thinking about the right wingers, the extreme right wingers who say uh, that everything was invented by way, by whites. Which these people, uh, you know, in the Nation of Islam, in gang, in um, the Pan African movement, they don't come very far from. It's just that they're supporting opposite sides. Uh, yeah, kind of like uh, it, it's pretty funny how people who oppose each other so vehemently usually have a lot of things in common to each other. It's a pretty it's a pretty interesting idea but anyway I'd like to end this video with the idea that if you give all of your power if you apply all of your all of the power of yourself to an oppressor you're oppressing yourself you're making yourself the victim because you're removing any power to um, any power over your own life from yourself and giving it to the oppressor you're basically saying okay this guy this race or this country is oppressing me and I need reparations I need um, this and I need that and I need whatever. I'm I'm oppressed. I'm a victim. You're you're a self-proclaimed victim. In the West, in Western society nowadays, at least that's how I see it. Everybody has an opportunity to achieve something. Now, if you decide to be a victim, it just means that you haven't been in a society that's uh, a lot less fair for people, a lot less meritocratic. Uh, you can pinpoint some problems in the society, of course, but it's not uh, not even close to some countries where there's actual problems. Like, for example, Venezuela nowadays. Terrible situation. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Um, once again, if you apply all of your power to your oppressor, or even to your perceived oppressor, it doesn't necessarily have to be an oppressor, you give up any power over yourself. That's how I would like to end this video, and that is why I would advise... Anybody from any race to not join these groups because they are very dysfunctional and they're not going to help you at all. They're just, they're just insanity, just mental insanity of saying, yes, our people made this. And then when you're asked why, oh, yeah, I have this book made by uh, this person um, who, who agrees with me. Yeah, so we can follow him. It's like asking a person, oh, why, why are you a Nazi? Oh, well, you can read Mein Kampf. It proves my points. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Or asking a Christian, why are you a Christian? And they, they're giving you points from the Bible. Or a Muslim, and they're giving you points from the Quran. You're kind of trying to... You're living in an echo chamber, guys. And you need to have outside influence. You need to have self-criticism. To be able to see what your flaws are. And seeing yourself as superior. As if you made everything. As if you deserve everything. Is the best way to be inferior. That's the only thing I have to say. See ya.